Hey, what's up, guys? Dark Wicker here, and in today's video, let me introduce you guys to the top five best beginner champions. The five champions that are the easiest to play and are also very strong. And for each position, I have two. Uh, I have chosen one champion for the Baron lane, for the jungle, for the mid lane, for the ADC position, and for the support position. I hope you guys will like this format. So we're gonna talk about the new uh, the champions. I think that are really strong, and we're gonna explain to you guys their build and what makes them strong and why they are also easy to handle for beginner players. If you guys like this format, then definitely make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I have some other ideas, maybe the top 5 best Baron liners, top 5 best ADCs, top 5 champions in high elo. And if you guys have any other uh, further ideas, you can write it down below in the comments as well for uh, champions that I should cover. Maybe best 5 mage champions. Um... Yeah, stuff like that, I guess. But yeah, for the Baron lane, it's gonna be Garen. I mean, you guys already know, Garen is spin to win. He is, what makes him strong? He is super, he's super tanky. His kit is easy to play. You just, you just try to use silence into the spin. And then you have the second material, which gives you damage reduction. And then the ultimate, when the opponents are low life as your finishing move, that does true damage. So Garen is overall in the Baron lane. Um, very good into most matchups uh, since he is tanky and he can be good. Uh, he can be good meat shield for your allies, and on top of that, he wins or he does super well against most matchups. Uh, we can talk about some champions he is not that easy to play against. I would say champions that have true damage and champions that outscale him as a split pusher. So potentially, Camille. Gwen, Jax, Fiora can be very good uh, against Garen or maybe even the Aatrox who has way too much sustain and he's also going to get the Mortar Reminder or Serena to run you down. But yeah, let's get started with the item build. By the way, the item build is never fixated. We talk about some core items and how you can adjust the build to make it the best way. Uh, I think most of the times uh, you like to go Black Cleaver, it gives you armor threats, gives you uh, ability haste and really good stats, and then additional movement speed as well. There are some matchups actually, where you do want to get the Divine Sundra, maybe as the first item. Let's say you play against Fiora, against Camille. Divine Sundra can be a great option um, to deal with the traits, because Divine Sundra, the more HP you have, the more healing they will get and the more damage they will do. So Divine Sunderer can be a good option against other Divine Sunderer champions so you guys can trade even in the lane. Otherwise, if the opponents are going for Heartbreaker, you're playing against Jax, Fiora, Camille, then Heartbreaker is also an excellent choice to defend the lane. Because if you play against Heartbreaker, you kind of need Heartbreaker as well um, to defend the waves. Like, because otherwise the opponent wave is too strong. And with this, you will have so much resistance to um, fight against the opponent, one versus one. And it's also going to buff your minions, so they can push you in. Otherwise, for the boots, stone plating is very good for the armor reduction. I mean, not armor reduction, physical damage reduction. Or Mercury threats for magic damage reduction. And then stone plating gives you a huge shield in team fights. Then Sterox Gauge gives you a lot of HP and the passive that is gonna give you attack damage. And when you're low life, you're getting a huge shield. Then Thorn Mail. A lot of times you will uh, start with steel caps into Brumble Vest because it makes you super super tanky. And this gives you damage reduction. Uh, I mean, gives you um, damage reflection as well plus Enter Heal. Enter heal very important against the Vine Sunder champions or champions that have a lot of sustain. Then Twin Guard makes you super tanky, gives you tons of resistance. Death Dance can be a great option for physical damage, mitigation, and sustain whenever a champion dies. Gives you really good stats as well. Force of Nature, an excellent choice against magic damage because it gives you magic damage reduction and movement speed and magic resistance. Otherwise, for the runes, we are running a resolve uh, path with grasp for healing, additional damage and sustain, and HP stacking. 
Then with Nullipan Orb for shield when we're low life, great synergy with the second ability stone plating and Strox Gauge. Then second wind or bone plating, bone plating for damage reduction and second wind for more healing in combination with your passive. Then we have overgrowth for HP stacking uh, whenever you kill a minion and then demolish for better turret sieging because for each plating you can get up to 150 gold in the early game and, and then just ignite flash for the kill pressure. But yeah, that's great for the item build for Garen and let's move on with the jungle. For the jungle I have two champions in mind that I think are very beginner friendly and are super strong in um are super strong in the right hands when you play the team fights well. I think it's probably gonna be Amumu and Ramus. Other options could be Wukong, Vi and Sincho, but I feel like Vi and Sincho and Wukong are a bit harder to play. And Amumu is a very beginner friendly champion because all you have to do is Press the ultimate in team fight and try to hit as many people as possible. And that's why he has a very high win rate actually in the Chinese server. Just because he is very easy to play and has a good team fight impact. And for the item build, you have a few options. Hybrid build, full AP build or tank build. But I think as a beginner, a tank build is the easiest to play. And you can put in like one or two AP items if you guys feel like you want to have more damage to carry. But as a tank uh, and... As a Mumu, you are an insane teamfight champion uh, with super impact thanks to the ultimate. And then he has this stun and the second ability and the third ability, doing a lot of damage. When I used to be, uh, when I used to play PC and I started playing jungle, Amumu was actually one of the first junglers I uh, started to play because he's very easy to play. So his kit is resolving about his bandage toss that can stun people and that you can use as your initiation tool to engage. Then the second ability that does percentage damage, which is super good uh, against objectives. Then the third ability, whenever you're taking damage, you're lowering the cooldown and you do AoE damage. And then the ultimate that can um, stun multiple people in a teamfight. On top of that, we are going for burn build. So the strength of Amumu, he's easy to play, he's good in team fights, and his weakness is probably that he is team reliant, he's a team reliant champion, and he can be punished in the early game by aggressive junglers like Lee Sin, Jarvan, Kha'Zix, etc. Uh, so this is the downside, but it just comes down to the path and just try to full clear, get level 5 and then look for gangs. And then obviously just try to go for the team fights. For the first item it's going to be Serum Crown plus Sunfire because with this way with this item path you can get the double burn effect um, while you don't even finish the Sunfire Aegis yet. So Serum Crown gives us percentage damage and AoE damage gives us HP plus armor. So second ability gives us percentage damage and Serum Crown gives us percentage damage. So very good to shred through tanks and objectives. Then fun, Sunfire also gives us um aoe damage to clear the jungle quicker and you're just running around opponents and you're just burning them then stone plating for the huge shield in team fights as your enchantment otherwise steel caps or mercury threats depending on the enemy team composition thorme is a great option for physical damage uh reflection plus gives you tons of armor plus it gives you anti heal then Twingard in the late game gives you tons of resistance and team fights. The more resistance you have, the more resistance you're getting. Plus it gives you tenacity for crowd control reduction. Then Varmux armor can be a good option to get a lot of HP. Otherwise, good options could be Force of Nature for magic resistance or Abyssal Mars also for magic resistance. Uh, Abyssal Mars, when you receive damage, you're like soaking up magic damage until it explodes and then for force of nature the more damage you're taking the more damage reduction i mean you're gonna get damage reduction at a certain point when you're stacking up otherwise run reads omen for crit champions to reduce the attack speed and when you're getting critted you're stacking up the termination at 500 charges you're getting healing for the runes aftershock when you immobilize a champion let's say with the bind or with the ultimate you will get resistance same for Curse of Colossus, when you immobilize a champion, you're getting a shielding, scaling with your maximum HP, bone plating for damage reduction, overgrowth for HP stacking, and then honestly, the next one, Squatch could be for poking damage, otherwise, good option could be 
Legend Bloodline for more sustain. You can get Triumph, also good. Since you have a lot of HP, when the champion dies, you're getting healing as well. You could try to get more tenacity if you guys need to. Or what else could be good is Transcendence for more ability haste. So you guys can use your abilities more often. I think it boils down to Transcendence or Triumph. Transcendence or Triumph. If you guys want to, you can also get Gathering Storm for more AP scaling, to be fair. Yeah, that's so. Like for this, you have so many options, to be fair. But it's gonna be a resolve into whatever you prefer, depending on the enemies. And then just Smart Flash, obviously. I think Transcendence can be very good for the ability haste or Triumph. But yeah, that's going to be for the jungle. Let's move on for the mid lane. For the mid lane, it's gonna be Lux. Lux is the champion I like to play. And she is very easy to play and super strong right now. She's the S plus champion uh, across the board. So for beginners, all you have to do is land the bind, third ability, and then ultimate and you nuke them. She has tons of utility in team fights thanks to her shielding, thanks to the bind, and she has insane amount of burst damage. Plus her kit, like I said, is very easy to play. So if you guys want to play a strong utility poking mage, then Lux is the champion I would recommend as a beginner to learn. If you guys want to... Honestly, by the way, what I'm talking about can also be champions to extend your champion pool let's say you are a adc main it's good for you to know one or two champions in every position so you can auto fill when you're getting forced out of fill so sometimes you will not get your main position you should know one or two champions for every position so this is also helping you to learn and try out new champions that are easy to play and you can integrate into your champion pool to be a more versatile player that can push into ranked it's actually a very important thing that you're not a one-trick pony. Usually I would recommend for your main position, two or three champions. And then for other positions, one or two champions. So in worst case, you don't get your main champion. Your main champion is getting banned. You have two other options to play. You don't get your main position. You can still play other champions. Go for those easy to play beginner champions that you can learn very easy and that are still very strong this is why i'm making this video for you guys so for lux what are the counters for lux honestly assassins can be hard for her but if you run stasis and you play it safe she is fine honestly lux is just very like she is one of the best mid lane champions right now and she's also very easy to play for the start we're uh, starting with the boots of mana granting us magic penetration and ability power then ludens echo for poking damage gives you ability haste and when you uh have the full stacks and you hit the champion you will do additional damage that it's gonna splash onto the opponents if you guys want to you can go for the pendant after the boots of mana for more magic penetration so you guys can do almost true damage but otherwise, you can, after Ludens Echo, get the Death Cap for the huge AP power spike. Why Death Cap? Because it not only increases your damage, but it also increases your shielding on the second ability. So Lux Kit is, first ability is the Bind, second ability is a Shield, third ability is a Poke, and ultimate is a long range laser that does tons of burst damage. Otherwise, you have two options. If your opponents are squishy and they don't have magic resistance yet, you can get infinity up for more burst damage. If the opponents are low life, you will do addition damage thanks to the in in inevitable demise passive. You will do up to 20% bonus damage against opponents that are 30, below 35% HP. Very good to one-shot opponents, plus it gives you magic penetration plus movement speed. Otherwise, Void Staff is a good option for magic penetration reduction percentage. So, if they have a lot of resistance, you can remove or lower the resistance. And then Horizon Focus or Banshee's Veil. Horizon Focus is an amazing tool for long-range poking champion like Lux. Let me explain. So let's read the passive. Apply one mark to enemy champion when you damage them with a non-targeted ability. Apply two marks when you immobilize them. Your bind counts as two marks. And at three stacks, you will do additional damage scaling with up to uh, scaling with 25% of your AP, uh, H, uh, 25% of your ability power. So you're doing tons of damage. Like look at this, Ludens Echo. 
it's 110 bonus magic damage plus 10 percent ability power and this is 90 plus 25 percent so horizon focus is absolutely goaded on uh, lux otherwise if the opponents have like really good burst damage and you want to block an incoming hostile ability then banshee's veil is a great option thanks to the spell sheet otherwise morello if you guys need enter here for example for the runes i'm running electrocute for the burst damage scorch for more poking damage then cheap shot for addition 2 damage this game otherwise you can run mark of the week for additional damage after hitting an opponent once ivo collector for ap scaling or ap scaling Stacking whenever you kill a champion and then gathering storm for ap scaling for the spells barrier gives you more survivability but if you guys want to play more aggressive then ignite is also a great option um and then just flash for the escape ability or playmaking with like a flash bind combo to catch people and let's move on to adc for adc honestly you have a few options that i think are very strong and easy to play I think Misfortune, for example, can be a strong lane dominant champion and you just have to press the ultimate. Ash is obviously also pretty easy to play, Plus, but I would say the ultimate is not that easy to use for beginners, I guess. Kaiser also a very strong champion right now that is... I would say she is not that hard to play, but she has some skill expression thanks to the stealth mechanic and thanks to her ultimate to reposition herself and that's why i actually chose caitlin why did i choose caitlin over the other adcs i think her kit is very easy to play and her, she has one of the biggest ranges from the get-go she outranges a lot of champions in the early game, making it very easy for you to trade. So you don't have to um, kite and position yourself. Uh, like your kiting and positioning in the laning phase and in team fights is way easier to execute on a Caitlyn. That's why I'm choosing here because I feel like a lot of times people are struggling to lane against Caitlyn. I see a lot of Caitlyn players are dominating other ADCs very easily thanks to the range factor and all you have to do is just press all auto attacks so i think caitlin is pretty easy to play obviously she has a skill shot with the um first ability the third ability is also kind of skill shot to reposition yourself and the ultimate is just a point and click so i think for an adc champion the main reason why i like her or i think she's very easy for beginners is the huge range she has throughout the game and she's strong at every stage of the game i mean you guys can disagree there are i mean obviously other adcs that are easy to play like i already mentioned i could honestly tell you who's the hardest to play though the hardest to play is draven the hardest to play is draven if you're good at uh, using skill shots, Varus is also fine. Ezreal, kind of middle with repositioning, etc. Can be a bit harder. I think Caitlyn's just the easiest out of those ADCs. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with uh, Caitlyn. You guys can tell me if you guys disagree or not, but I think Caitlyn easy to play for beginners. Remember, this is orientated for beginners. A, a strong champion that is at the same time also also easy to play. So I talked about the advantages having the range factor. So we're starting with Glutton's Grease for the attack damage and for the lifesteal. Then Immortal Sheep Bow. This item is one of the core items for a lot of ADCs. Granting you amazing stats um, like attack damage, crit rate, attack speed, lifesteal. When you're low life you're also getting the shield that is scaling with your crit plus you're getting additional lifesteal. Phantom Dancer gives you tons of movement speed and, uh, and attack speed. Then Infinity Edge for the huge uh, crit power spike. I see a lot of times people are running Collector. It gives you additional execution damage and crit rate. Um, I feel like sometimes people are being, even getting it second. I mean Collector is kind of like... It just feels good to see those 99999 true damage numbers. But I think actually more to remind at this position is better for the armor shred. And for the enter heal effect. And the last item is probably. 
I mean Collector for better execution damage or Bloodthirster for more sustain and shielding or Guardian Angel for better survivability. I think Collector isn't as good as people think. I mean, it just looks fancy to be fair. Because look at the stats, 40 attack damage, 25 crit rate, armor penetration, and the passive is just, when they're falling below 5%, then you will automatically execute them, but that's about it. Like if you compare, some people are getting collector second item, by the way, and look at the comparison, 25 attack damage, 25 crit rate, 30% attack speed, 5% movement speed, where every time you hit a... Um, Gain 7% movement speed when you attack a champion and 25% attack speed when you hit a champion 4 times or like a monster or minion. So this can give you up to 55% attack speed, right? While Collector gives you 40 attack damage and crit rate. This gives you 25 and then up to D this is just way better. For the runes, then Lethal Tempo giving you tons of attack speed, Brutal for additional auto attack damage, Giant Slayer for more damage when the opponents have 40, uh, gives you up to 40% bonus damage when the opponents have 700 bonus HP, then Legend Alacrity for additional attack speed, or Legend Bloodline for more sustain, and then Bone Plating for damage reduction. And then just Exhaust Flash. Let's move on to support! For support, honestly, I could still uh, take the Lux to be fair, because Lux support is also very strong and easy to play. Otherwise, we could argue with Yumi, but I don't think Yumi is necessarily the easiest to play solo queue champion. Uh, Yumi is a champion that is more orientated about being like a duo queue. I mean, obviously you don't have to do much on this champion. She's very easy to play. But I think she is better duo queue than solo queue. The pick is going to be Soraka. Soraka is a very, very easy to play champion. Um... All you have to do is spam your second ability and heal opponents. Then you have the ultimate for AoE healing. And then the first ability gives you um, silence. Plus you can heal or you can reduce the cooldown of your healing as well. But you need to understand that you, that you should pick Soraka when you have like one or two front lines. At least because then she is the most effective. So for the item build... We, we are running Ancient Coin as our support item. Um, gives us HP and Ability Haste. Plus then it also gives us Scaling. I mean it's going to give you a lot of Ability Power. Then Boots of Mana giving us Magic Penetration and Ability Power as well. So, guys, so, you, guys, so you guys will do more damage. Step of Flowing Water is a great... Uh, support item healing or shielding will give both of you and your ally 15 ability haste and ability power plus this gives you mana and ability haste then um he's getting mana lock I, I i think i copied the top two soraka build um but there are also a lot of other options like with road of age or maybe with um art Archangel Staff for better late game scaling because Road of Age is an insane scaling tool and then Archangel as well because with this you will have tons of mana so you will never run out of mana and it gives you insane late game scaling for more um, ability power and more damage and more healing actually but this gives you a better power spike like immediately from the get go Locket uh, for shielding very useful you could also just use the revitalize thing. Revival enchant gives you increased healing. Locket gives you huge shield value though in team fights. Um, because then you have shield. By the way, wait, wait, this human knows. Because if you're healing someone who's full HP, he's getting shielding. And with the mana locket, you can provide everyone with a shielding as well. So you guys can. Overcap the healing to have them everyone have so much HP like beyond max HP they will have the more shielding then Then cosmic drive gives you tons of movement speed and ability haste very good for Soraka for kiting and Chasing more like for kiting to be fair and it's easier for you to let the first ability then Harmonic echo gives you additional healing 
Yeah, when you heal someone, you will heal even more. And then Death Cap gives you the AP power spike. Dude, my nose is actually, I don't know. Airy gives you additional poking damage. Pot of Life gives you hitting an enemy champion with an attack or ability marks them. When allies hit that, they will get additional healing. And you will also heal yourself. Then Bone Plating for damage reduction. Then we have Revitalize for additional healing. And Mana Pro Band for additional mana when you hit a champion. And then just heal plus flash. Hope you guys will enjoy uh, trying those champions out. So make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And you guys can tell me down below if you guys like the video. And what champions would switch out. Or maybe you have some other ideas. I see you guys. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush